so okay <clears throat> so one of the things trading is trading is all about you trading is is 100 percent you you are and it the you are the artist you're you're the captain of the ship and there's really nobody else um nobody else that you're being held accountable to it's, it's just you and so with that being said one of the things as a, a, a trader learning and coming up into it is is discipline and focus um because there everybody is an artist it is very very easy to go out and see everybody paint however they're painting and being successful with it and and we look around and we see it and we're like oh i want to try that style oh no i want to try that style and what we end up doing is we just we just hop from the next shiny thing to the next shiny thing without realizing that that if you just stuck to what you started with and and got good at that you would then be able to branch out and then always fall back to the thing that you know you're good at um and so trading's the same way trading um you know when it when it comes down to it you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want However, it fits your personality, your schedule, your trading style, your trading plan, how, however you want to do it, you can do it. And the only way somebody can tell you that you're wrong or the only way you'll be wrong if you're, is if you're not profitable doing it. If you're profitable doing it, don't let anybody come and tell you, oh, you're doing this wrong. You're profitable. And if, and if you've reached that level and reached that goal, then all you got to do is maintain profitability. Um, you can branch out and do all this new stuff if you want, but uh, you always keep you always keep what you are good at in, in on on the um, on the back burner, something to fall back on on hard times, on on um, on uh, <clears throat> moments of 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 struggling. Whenever your your focus is off, you're you're lost or you're um, you're getting emotional. Um, so it is all about you. Um, there is a psychology to all this that you're going to have to, your, your psychology is what you're going to have to master. When it comes down to trading, trading is not hard. Trading is not rocket science. Trading is, is a, it's a very much like, um, it's very much like a science. You, you, you test a hypothesis, you see if it works out. If it works out, you stick with it. If it doesn't, you change your hypothesis and test it again. And so when it comes down to it, as soon as you find what works, the only thing then that starts getting tested is yourself. So as far as starting out in the beginning for anybody, whatever level you're at, if you've stuck with, okay, let's say you've learned the money line strategy, which is what the the 50 and you have two fast EMAs, right? It, it's, it's a slow yes, EMA three and two six. EMAs. Okay. So if you've started out with that and you've back tested that and you know that it's worked, then stick with that and continue forward testing. And the way, so you've done all the back test and if you know it works and it works for you, great. If it doesn't either go through your your trading journals and your, your history that you should have been keeping track of history journals, um, records are very, very important. It's outside of your actual account balance. It's the only way to look, to see if you are profitable and the only way really, cause even if you're looking at your account balance, the only way to tweak your profitability, um, to make yourself more profitable. Um, if you are profitable, but you don't have any records, then you're really just shooting in the dark on how you can make yourself better. If you're profitable and you have records, you can look back to the records to see, you know what, out of nine out of 10 times that I've taken a trade at, at midnight, they've all lost. Well, you know what? Stop taking trades at midnight. And already you've increased, you've already increased, you know, nine winning or nine losing trades. You've knocked those out of your, 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 your history from then going forward. And so <clears throat> there is, Record keeping is important. It's tedious, but it's very important. Um, so once you start there, whether it's, if you're just doing simple support and resistance, breaks of support and retests of 
of into a um, into a resistance or break of resistance and a retest into support. That works. If you're doing if you're using trend lines and and you're doing uh, entries on trend lines, breaks of trend lines, retests of trend lines, if it works and you've tested it, then your next step is to move forward on a on a small account because the next test you're going to be going through is your psychology. Um, it's going to be your 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 FOMO, your fear of missing out, your your um, your discipline on sticking to your trading plan, and your fears of loss. Um, we get really good at back testing and seeing that yes, we have losers, but for the most part, our winners outweigh our losers. But when you start getting into your weekend of live testing and you're watching that loss happen over, you know, if you're a, if you're a day trader and it's happening over the next three hours for the three hours, your emotions are playing on you and they're tugging at you. Um, if, if you're a, a, a scalper for the most part, you're in and out quickly. So your losses are relatively fast, but generally have a lot of losses back to back, which can also play against your psychology. So once you've tested something that you, you know, that you've gone through, you've tested, it works, and you've seen yourself be successful in historical data, you start moving forward into live market. Um, not necessarily with a, an account, although if you, if you have the available funds to do a small account and you can trade small, um, you'd be surprised what a $100 account, even, even trading um, the smallest lot size there is, you'd be surprised how much a dollar fifty hitting a dollar fifty loss two times in a row was like it. It really does. It plays on your psychology. It, as small as a, an amount that is, as quickly as, as we are to toss it out to Starbucks or McDonald's or Chick Fil A, it it really hurts to see it leave our account. Um, and so you'll get the. That's where the. That's where you're. That's where you're going to either succeed or fail is in psychology. If you have a strategy that works, it's gonna work. If you could find some way to program it robotically to make it work, it would work. Unfortunately, it's really hard. Um, it takes a whole nother skill set. So the only person that has to stick to it is you. And that's where the failure usually comes into play. So <clears throat> um, as far as, see, and unfortunately with not knowing how everybody, I would like to like, the money line strategy, there isn't really much for marking up charts. Um, you're, for, for that one, although there is some confluence, I guess you could have um, to help increase your profitability in the money line strategy. For the money line strategy as a, as a whole, you know, if you get the sell signal or buy signal by the um, EMAs, you just, you take that trade. Um, if you are more of a resistance and support trader. So I don't know who, what trading styles is everybody at? I don't know, speak up if you can, or put it in the chat. What are you, what are you focusing on right at this moment? I, I like um, scalping. What are you using for scalping though? As far as like the indicator or like what you mean? <clears throat> like, what is your trading plan for scalping? Are you support resistance? Are you are you charting it up and then waiting for breaks? Are you waiting for? Are you using indicators? What are you doing? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So I'm using support resistance, um, in the EOMAs, and stochastics. Okay, and so what time frame were you trading on? Are you doing the one minute, five minute? Um, usually the five minute or 15 minute. And how have you been successful in that? I have been successful, but I, I like you were mentioning something, but I have also uh, dealt with a lot of stuff and went away from the charts for a minute and just now kind of getting back into it. And it, feel, it, don't, it doesn't feel like I'm starting all the way over, but it feels like I'm trying to get back like, stationed in that place um so yeah okay do you have um 
you have a trading journal? No, I have, I have where I wrote down the rules to how I was trading, but as far as the journal itself, I do not. So one of the, and uh, you know, as talk about trading journal, one of the benefits of trading journals is when you get into this slump of, Hey, I'm getting back into it. I, you know, I was, I took vacation for a week, you know, um, so I'm getting back into it and it feels sort of off. Like I can't, I'm trying to get back into a rhythm. One of the benefits of the trading journal is it helps getting back to that rhythm faster. You can look over your past, like 10 trades, um, in your trading journal <clears throat> to see what they look like. What was your mindset around that time? And you can go back and look play through market bar replay, how it looked as the market was playing out. So you can help get back into that frame of mind. So you're not trying to do that in your live account. You actually get to do that with your older stuff that you're walking through. So one of the other benefits of keeping a trading journal. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I would definitely be doing that. Um, I know Alexandra and Alice said support resistance. What, um, what time frames are you guys trading on? The 15th. 15 for Alexandria. Are you using, um, and so are, are you successful on that so far with the 15 minutes as being your trading time frame? Um, 15 minutes, yes. I have my up and downs where sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. Um, but yes, definitely on 15 minutes, is definitely my time frame. Okay, so when you say sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. Um, the question that I have, like, when you say successful sometimes and not successful, what is this not successful? What do you actually mean by I'm not successful? Sorry, um, where do I begin? So for example, um, I did my support and resistance lines, my tread lines, and um, oh, let me look at my thing. <laughs> I seen that I was in a sell for XBS 500. And then my prediction was wrong and it ended up turning into a buy. So now I'm sitting here stuck in a buy and sell because I did something stupid. <laughs> So that's why I said um, sometimes not. And I know you're not supposed to, you know, do a buy and a sell at the same time. But I was like, my account was on um, the free I was running out of free margin. Um, so I was like, I have to to save myself, basically. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, you were hedging. Um, I believe that's that's generally what the process is for hedging, where you buy and sell at the same time, and then you uh, close yes. open when you, uh, so uh, fun times. Um, so one of, and there, there's the current, the current recommendation that I, that I've been following and a lot of people have been following is get successful and maintain that profitability, keep your records. That way you can show that you maintain profitability. But then the next thing that you, you should be doing is go ahead, like, any one of us are, are, are probably, if you're live trading right now, chances are you're trading with something mm, somewhere $100 or more. Okay, well, any one of these funded accounts, um, some of their entry fees are about 100 bucks. And so it would be better, um, it would be more successful, more reliable to, if you know that you're profitable and you, you can maintain profitability, is to turn around, take that hundred bucks, take the challenges and work through those and let them fund you. In that process of getting funded by them, you then turn around and do exactly what you're going to be doing. But instead of trying to take a hundred dollars and turn it into your bankroll for later on, you're now trading their hundred thousand dollar account, $50,000 account. Um, and you can then take all those profits um, and start building up your own account. That way, once again, you're, you're now in charge of your money versus using their money. Um, so this, Alexandra, because you brought up the idea of, of being um, short on uh, margin. Um, 
we're usually short on margin when we are over leveraging the account that we already have, um, which should also be all part of that trading plan. Because if you if you overshoot your margin and you get margin called, you've it doesn't matter if that trade was eventually going to win or not. You're out that money, and and you're done. And so <clears throat> there is a a higher level of risk of not being successful by playing su with such a, a low funded account. Um, and so my recommendation as well as, uh, as, as a few others is, you know, stick to what you know, make sure it's profitable, make sure you can maintain it by testing it forward that you're, you're going to be able to stay disciplined to it. Um, and then go for funded, go for funded, um, one of the funded challenges, um, find out people's tips and tricks on the funded challenges. Some people are able to do like, if you're, if some of you are, are scalpers, some of you guys can hit, if you're good at scalping and you've been doing it and you're profitable, it would take you almost no time to reach the required threshold that the challenges need, which is usually like 10% account growth. Um, 10% account growth is, is really nothing, especially for a good scalper. And I'm, I don't even mean like ex excellent scalper. I just mean a good scalper. Like you just know what you're doing and you're disciplined to it. 10% is nothing. You can make that easy. But what generally happens is you're a scalper. You've probably made that in the first two days and they expect 10 days of trading. And so you end up failing the 10 days of trading because you either broke out of your habit and routine of getting into it and it got into, so there's, or, or you just didn't do it. And then you missed out on that. So there's tips and tricks in that, you know, like going in and just making small uh, per or um, meeting your threshold of 10% and then just going in and making, you know, the smallest lot size you can uh, for the other eight days in order to meet the time criteria. <clears throat> um, so there's tips and tricks like that, that, you know, I would recommend. The, the first thing though, is making sure that you are, you are profitable um, and, Outside of, once again, growing your own account and knowing that it's growing, um, keeping up a trading journal is going to be able to, to have you be able to look back on that all over your history to make sure you were profitable, to make sure you weren't just lucky. Um, you know, we, we, can, we can get into some good winning streaks, but the winning streaks might just be that. We weren't following our trading plan. So we don't know that those winning streaks are always going to be like that. We could get into a huge loss streak that happens, in which case, if you weren't prepared for that because you didn't follow your trading plan and the trading plan that you have didn't account for those losses, then that's where it's going to mess up on your psychology. You know, if, if, you, if you don't have a trading plan, which specifically tells you, you know, what you're looking for, what you, what your entry is, <clears throat> what your stops and targets are. Um, when do you call it quits? After how many back-to-back -back losses do you call it quits? Um, and, um, and then how many successful wins do you go for? If you don't have one of those, then you're probably setting yourself up for failure. Um, you, we can get really, really we, you can get lucky. It's, it's a 50, 50 shot. When you think about it, price is either going to go up or it's going to go down and you can get, you, you can flip a coin 50 times and you could probably be right. Most of that, but there's going to be those times that you're wrong, that you're not emotionally prepared for. You're not psychologically prepared for, and it brings into revenge trading. It brings into quitting. It brings into all sorts of other stuff that then decrease your chances of, of winning, of being right. So um, who has a trading, who has a trading plan and who has a trading journal? Um, I have a trading plan. My trading plan is basically, um, what I do is, give me a second, let me think. <laughs> so, I wrote down, I'm going to um, catch 10 pips. Um, I like to trade um, S&P. So what I was doing and it was working for me was um, 
catch 10 pips, that's $20. And I'll do five trades of 10 pips and that'll be $100. And $100 for five days is $1,000. That was my my trading um, challenge and plan. Um, that's what I was sticking to. And then, like you said, I stopped sticking to it um, because I started winning a lot. So I started getting a little greedy and that's when everything went left. It didn't go left, left, but it went left. <laughs> and yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, one of the, the worst, one of the worst things we can do for our trading plan is go outside of the trading plan. And one of the worst um, consequences of that is being successful when that happens. Because then, then we take that trading plan and it's like, ah, well, you know what? I don't really need this. Look at me. I just, I just didn't follow it and I won. So, and then we end up stepping outside those bounds. Our winners, you know, they, they hit those parts of the brain where, where we remember them very, very heavily. And the losers where we sort of like shuffle underneath the rug until we get to a point where we realize we've been shuffling way too much. And that rug is now 10 feet high and we're in a problem now. So trading plans, you, if you don't have a trading plan, you need a trading plan. It needs to, it needs to tell you like, what is your goal? What is where, like Alexandria, she, she had a, a, she had a money goal. She had a weekly goal. Um, there should also be caveats to that on if you don't make it because you don't want to get into the habit of, I haven't made my goal yet. Let me just continue trading, trading, trading until I get it because then you're not thinking in the right mind. You're not thinking objectively. You're thinking goal oriented, which could be a problem um, when following trading plan. So you need your trading plan, which tells you your risk management, tells you your entry reasons, tells you which pairs you're looking at, um, pairs or uh commodity or indice, whatever, whichever one you're looking at stocks, um, you, you need to have that in your trading plan and you need to follow it. Um, and keeping track of everything that you do in the journal. So that way, when you look back over the week, you know, if you're trading Forex Friday at evening and, and Saturday, the, the entire day of Saturday, you're not trading. Everything's shut down unless you're trading after hours, in which case, why would you I mean, I don't think anybody here is that successful that we are paying those exorbitant amount of fees to trade after hours. Um, so you review your trading plan. You reviewed your trading journal to make sure that the trades that you took throughout the week stuck to your trading plan and that they were in the bounds of the losses you expect, the wins you expect um, for doing the thing that you've already done all of your back testing for. If, if, we put in so much work to do all this back testing. It makes it useless and pointless if we go forward with it and completely ignore it by not following what we back tested. Um, why did you even back test? Uh, so start with the trading, get the trading plan. You need it written down, print it out, written down in front of you because it's almost like a checklist. You need to make sure that you're following it um, to the T because that is what you practiced in your back testing that's what you practiced in your forward testing with demo like this this is what you that is your 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 paperwork in front of you is, is what tells you that or what reminds you that this works so that way when you do get those losses that are going to come um that it gives you that discipline to stick to it because you know eventually the wins outweigh the losses and that's where the profitability comes into play so trading plan, trading journal, um, trading plan does not have to be, does not have to be complicated. Um, let me see. <clears throat> I don't want to, I do. So simple trades, let's see. And just so you know, okay, so 
Am I sharing Bob JPY? Yeah, we can see it. Good, my screen just went all finicky. Here we go. Okay, so, so my simple trick is, okay, my screen is going finicky. You guys can still see it, right? Because it's jumping all over the place for me. We can see it, but it is jumping all over for us as well. Okay, good. I don't know why it was doing that. Okay. <clears throat> so my simple trading plan. My simple trading plan involves, I have a whole nother um, journal I use for that um, or another computer. So for me, I do support and resistance um, in, in a trend. And I, I, I define trends by certain ways. You, in order to stay objective to your trading plan, you need to, you need to have rules around things. So, so I like to use the four hour as my behavior, the one hour as my structure and usually about 15 minutes five minutes is my entries and so when i look at when i look at certain things this is where this is where everybody is their own artist if you were to look at this chart is this a bullish market or a bearish market bearish look does anybody say bullish? It's bullish. So you say bullish, you, bullish. <laughs> you'd be waiting for buys, right? There are a couple of you said bearish, you're waiting for sells. And you know what? Neither one of us are wrong. Um, your trading plan may tell you exactly what you need to wait on in order to get a buy and you may be successful. My trading plan tells me exactly what I need to wait on for this sell and I may be successful. I may lose it. Doesn't make it doesn't make me wrong as long as I've stuck to what I've back tested, forward tested, and I know works. And I tweak um, roughly every hundred trades or so. Um, I'll go back through my trading journal, see what works, see what I can make work better, um, and see what I can avoid. Because we're human, we have we, we you know we make our own errors, and we can see that. I can see that in my trading journal where I've made my errors at. So for me, I'm in a bearish market. For me, I did see this earlier as being bullish, um, but to me, we've broken what I would consider this bullish line. Um, trend lines, if you wanna draw a trend line, you know, you get your points there and they consider it broken. So to me, I don't exactly use trend lines as a trading thing. I just use them as a reference point, in which case, I'm looking for the bearish reversal. So I'm looking for sells. I'm no longer looking for buys. Somebody else could be looking right here for buys. Somebody else could be looking right here for buys. Wick rejection, buys. Doesn't make it wrong. Um, what makes it wrong is if you go outside of your own trading style in order to try to get into the market just because you want to get into the market. That's what makes it wrong. So me, simple thing, I'm just looking for a change in trend went from bullish to bearish. I have a structure that's been created and broken through. Now I'm just waiting for a retest. That's it. I drop down to my lower time frames. I have my one hour level here. Um, I just do from wicks to bodies. Very simple. It's consistent. Uh, it, I, I don't have to be, it's objective. I don't have to. Um, I don't have to guess. I don't have to wonder if if my my support resistance line should be here or down here at the wick. It's always consistent. I have rules. A big spike like this, I completely and totally ignore. Why? Because chances are on the one hour that was probably news of some sort. I'm not concerned about it. What I am concerned about is majority of what happened is in and around this area. So that's what I'm going to stick with. So all I'm waiting for 
is price to get back into this area. Once price gets back into this area, I drop down into my 15 or my five. And I have two simple entry patterns. That's it. One is double top. So I either want it to come back in here, break away, come back up. And the second one will be my entry or I actually drew this wrong. It'll come down away from that, come up for a, a, to create a lower high. And then that'll be my entry, this lower high. The lower high, I have very specific rules on that. For the lower high on the 15, I want two wicks. So I want a bullish candle with a wick rejection up top. And then I want a either a bullish or a bearish. It really doesn't matter. As long as it has a nice enough wick that usually has, I'm looking for stuff like this. I want wicks up top, not a lot of wicks at the bottom for my entries. And then that's it. I then target, I always do a one to three above the level, one to one to the lows at least, but then I shoot for a one to three. Now I have very specific rules on my double top. The first entry, which this does not count because it's not actually in the zone. <clears throat> I'll use this as, the, uh, as a good reference point though. If this was in a zone that I was actually looking at, the first top comes up and makes an area that I'm interested in from the bodies to the wicks. Pulls away, makes a nice similar V shape that I'm liking. As long as the second test comes into the same area without closing above, it can wick above, but not close above. That's a valid double top for me. I'm in on the next candle. So those would be my rules for the double top. Now I've gone through and I've tested this same process, four hour, one hour, 15 minutes on odd JPY, odd NZD, and on U, odd USD. And on general, I get a 63% win rate with the one to three. Doing pretty good on that. <clears throat> what fails to happen, or what does generally happen, is my psychology is where it gets tore up. Not waiting for price to come into this area. Or not once price leaves this area, getting freaked out that I've missed the trade. And then so I justify getting in anyway, and it ends up losing. Although sometimes it ends up winning. But once again, that makes it worse. Winning when you've done something wrong makes it worse than losing. Losing, you can slap yourself on the hand and go, I, I should have known better. Winning, on the other hand, and you start throwing out your own trading plan. But this is it. That is my, my trading my trading from a from a T, it's very, very simple. I, I can follow it relatively easily. Um, it works. It's worked back tested. It worked for testing and demo. The only place it hasn't really worked is actually um, for testing with a live small account. Seeing that stuff, seeing those numbers go down, even on if anybody's, if any of you guys have actually traded um, with any broker who has I don't know, decent spreads, you'll know the minute you're in a, your minute you're into an entry, um, you're already in the negative because, because of spreads. And so you don't think during back testing and demo testing, how that plays on your psychology, but it plays on your psychology. Um, and so the next thing after getting your trading plan together, going through the back testing and the forward test and make sure it works and that you can stick to it. Um, the next test is going to be you. Um, and, and that's, that's roughly where it will fail or succeed. Um, and so, uh, that's, I mean, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very simple. Um, but whatever you, whatever you're testing, whatever you're going to stick with, I would recommend sticking for at least 
100 to 150 trades. You need 100 to 150 trades in your trading journal to see if it was successful. Once you get that and you see that it's successful, then you forward test. Hey, okay. How does that always happen? I call you and ask you something, then you call me back and then. <laughs> I see how you are now. I'm going to move Darren. Hi, Darren. I thought he was talking to us. Um, <laughs> what in the world? I wasn't sure what that was about. Um, 100 to 150 trades of backtesting. That way you know that it's successful. 100 to 150 trades of forward testing. That way you know, number one, that you can stick to it, um, that it fits, your, it fits your trading style, it fits your lifestyle. If you're a scalper and, and you're backtesting and you've backtested 150 trades, but you realize that, that the trades that you were backtesting were at two o'clock in the morning when normally you're sleeping, like that's not going to work for you. You need to you need to make sure that you can stick to whatever whatever you're 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 going to be trading, and that's where the forward testing comes into play. If you back test and it's successful, and you forward test and it's not, then something either you tailor fit your back test to make it successful. Um, you you cheated yourself in in looking at it, or um, or you messed up something in your forward testing that you weren't exactly prepared for. Um, whether you, I can't even, I can't even think of, you know, either you didn't stick to your trading plan, um, or, or maybe it really isn't that successful. And, and you were just on the, on the brink of, of, uh, of being successful, but this is where a trading journal comes into play because as you go through and you look at your trades, when you're reviewing them. And you can see on whether or not you actually followed your trading plan. And you have to be, this is, it, the accountability is only to you. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. Did you follow the trading plan or did you not? Did you see something that was a little outside of your trading plan? So you justified taking it because it was just a little off. How many times have you done that? If you're doing that mentally now, how many times have you subconsciously done it? And so this is where you get to, you have to test yourself and you need, in order to do that, you need to be able to have historical data for yourself to know on whether or not you are successful. Um, EMAs, you can, you can do the same thing with EMAs. You can make it as simple as, as uh, the money line, the money line strategy works. Um, I tested when I first started, what, two years ago, tested the money line strategy on the five minute, uh, five minute chart worked phenomenally. Um, the only problem is I tested the five minute chart and, and I tested every single entry as if I would have taken every single entry without actually thinking about the fact that every five minute candle that comes up, I'm not actively watching my chart. So when, when the alert comes on at one o'clock in the morning, am, am I actually getting up to take that entry? Probably not. What about three o'clock in the morning? What about one, two, three, and four o'clock in the morning? What is your next day going to look like if, if you still have a, a, a civilian job, a real a, a job that you have to go to, you're nine to five, and you haven't slept because you've been busy taking your trades? So this is where forward testing will come into play. You'll actually see if what you back tested works with your actual schedule. If it doesn't, tweak what works. This is where you can you can look and see and go, okay, you know what? Between 11 and noon every day on the trades that I took forward testing, they all failed. Okay, well, 11 and noon around on Eastern Standard Time is around lunchtime. Um, the market sort of like starts to wallow around a little bit on the lower time frames because all the big players have gone to lunch. All the banks are, are, are out and about, liquidity's down. So it's sort of like wallows around for a little bit. So like those, those kind of things, you, you'd be able to see that in your journal though, that those were the type of trades that weren't successful for you. Or maybe you'll see that first thing in the morning at 8.30, when things liven up, there are huge movements all the way until about 11.15 when things start wallowing around. Um, you'll be able to see that in your trading journal. You'll be able to see that 
uh, on what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, so this is why I highly recommend a trading journal and I highly recommend actually having your trading plan written out, a physical copy. If you don't have it on your computer so you can pull it up and actually make sure you're following it, have a physical copy next to you. That way you are referencing it to make sure that it fits. <clears throat> and if you don't have, if you come across a situation in your back testing or your forward testing that you haven't accounted for, like you don't have rules for, make up rules for them. Um, I am incorporating, which I have been incorporating head and shoulders into my double tops, double bottoms. Um, head and shoulders is not something I've been testing for. So I had to create rules for head and shoulders. What's a proper head and shoulders? You know, if, if this comes up, comes back down, comes back up, and then, you know, is, is that a proper head and shoulders? To some people, they're like, yeah, no, I see that as a head and shoulders all day long. It might not look like that to me. I'm not going to continue guessing at what a head and shoulders takes because what if sometimes I take a one that looks like this and other times I take one, you know, that looks more like this, which ones are more successful? Well, my forward testing and back testing would be able to tell me that based upon what I've tested. But if I'm just shooting at a, you know, a random in the dark with no rules, I can't test. Um, and so have rules for things and, and stick to those rules. Stick to them, especially if you've back tested it. If you're forward testing and you're tweaking, which is allowed as long as you are keeping track of what you're tweaking, you know, very much, I think every single one of us has done some sort of science in school. You know, you had a control group, which is your trading plan that you already know that works. And then you make one or two minor adjustments to, to test against your control group. The same process is here. Um, it's no different. So yeah, stick with that trading journal, trading plan. I don't know if I, I can't harp on that anymore, I don't think. So I don't know what kind of questions you guys have in regards to trading, where you're at, what you could do better, what you could um, focus more on. I do wanna say, this is Nicole, that the whole trading plan, um, that's something that I remembered that when I, um, you know, when I first joined the academy and you were um, trying to show me the charts and stuff, is that trading plan. So when I'm recycling your words, it's because you drilled it and drilled it and drilled it about a trading plan, about having rules. You got to have rules. <laughs> you have to have rules. I remember you said that, that is, and I see how important it is. I even see that it's more important even hearing you talk. That that's, it's very important. It, there's, <clears throat> there's things that we, and there's things that you're going to hear all throughout your, as you continue, if you guys just decide to continue and stick with trading, there's things that you're going to hear in the very beginning of your trading journey that are going to bite you in the butt. And you're going to look back and go, why didn't I follow or think about that when it was first, you know, like you're going to have an aha moment. And generally the aha moments come around trading journals, trading plans, and rules. Um, because as soon as you realize that trading is an art slash science and there's really nothing nothing really to it and the only person that makes it unsuccessful is yourself that's when you can start working on yourself um so once you have the winning you know the winning formula the winning strategy and there's if you're looking for a winning strategy with 100 percent success rate good luck um you know, anybody who has that winning strategy is not sharing it. It's theirs. Um, it, it, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, so understanding you don't have to have a winning strategy. I do one to threes. I, I risk one to gain three. That means on general, I could for every, I have like a, it, I could have at least a, 33% win rate and still be profitable. Barely profitable, but still be profitable. I could be wrong 70% of the time and still be profitable. 
that is a huge margin of error. Um, and so anytime you find anything with like a 50% win rate, which once again, the market 50-50 is going up, it's going down. I could flip a coin. So risk, have risk discipline is, is, is a huge thing. And so if you can get into the habit of being wrong more times than you're right, but shooting for higher risk reward, you'll be successful as long as you control your emotions. It's, it's all the test of you. Can you stomach control losing three times in a row to win one, to come back to break even? That's break even. Like it doesn't, doesn't really take much. At a one to three ratio, um, out of 10 trades, I could win three and lose seven and still come out two points profitable. 2%, 2R, not, not percent, 2R, whatever the risk is. So it's like, it's, that's a pretty good, it, that's a pretty good strategy. Um, and everybody talks about double tops, double bottoms because they work. Do they work all the time? No, but you know what? I don't need them to work all the time. I just need them to work a little bit more than 50% of the time because I'm already going for something where I can still be profitable losing 70% of the time. So this is where the numbers all play out if you let them play it out. And the only person who can't let them play out will be you when you're psychology. When you're emotional. Okay, somebody needs to mute. Oh. Sorry, Sakara. Swakara. Sorry, I muted you. Oh, Swakara. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> so um, if you're going to be a scalper, all the scalpers that I know, you you really you really have to have a stomach for losing a lot. Um, either you have to be quick in your thought process and quick in your decision making, or you have to be um, you have to be okay with being wrong a lot. Um, and for the most part, a lot of people aren't built that way. Um, so if, if you know that that's, that's not you, whether you, you know, like a lot of, a lot of us struggle with pride, we don't like being wrong. And so being a scalper isn't for everybody, especially those who struggle with pride. Um, so there, but there are other trading methods that work just, just as well. Um, and for the most part, unless you are over leveraging, over risking your account, nobody's becoming a millionaire within, a, you know, three to six months. It, it does take time. Compounding takes time. Compounding your account um, takes time. Unless you're over, over risking, in which case, you know, you're gambling at that point in time. Um, so, uh, Watch out for that. Does, well, speaking of, okay. So speaking of like gambling, so looking at a particular trade, this is a paper account. This is a paper account, which I've kept going because I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. The fact that I set this up, I let it go and then I ignored it without thinking about it, thinking my stop loss would take me out. Stop loss did not take me out and I'm still in, still going down. It's, it's over two times what I, what I originally risked. And so when they, when they talk about, when you see all those little um, blurbs about, you know, trading has risk to it, even having a stop loss doesn't save you from that risk. So whatever trading plan you're, you're, you're going to work with, you know, you need to account for a lot of different things. You need to account for, um, you know, for, for somebody who's scalping, if, if you, if you think your stop loss could possibly say, if you think your stop loss is going to save you, that's not always the case. Um, there's slippage, there's, there's, you know, computer mess ups, there's, there's communication errors, there's this, I don't even know why this is still going. Like it still hasn't 
It never triggered when it came down. It didn't knock me out. Thank goodness it's a paper account because if this was not a paper account, that would be mine. Um, and you know, you you own it. I, if this was a live account and I, I took this to the broker, they'd be like, sorry, you should have closed it out. Like, yeah, you have a stop loss, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Um, there's been many instances of price skyrocketing or dropping too rapidly for orders to be filled to knock out a stop loss. And all of a sudden, you know, instead of having a, a hundred dollar loss, you're down $300 because that's where it actually kicked you out at. And so for anybody who's over leveraging or over risking their account, this is what you can run into. You, you could wipe out a whole lot of, of good by, by over leveraging and over risking. Um, you know, at right now, this is 1% of the account. I'm total down about 3% of the account, which is fine. It's not, you know, 3% of, of an account's not detrimental. If this was 10% of my account and I'm down 30% of my account, that's detrimental. You know, that, that's a huge, that's a huge loss. So understand that there's, there's going to be some risk involved and understand it's, it's, it is, it's a process. It's a, there's, it's not quick to, there's no quick to get rich. Um, if there is, your risk is so much higher than anybody else's. Um, because of whatever it is to get rich quick, whatever it is, you're up there. The odds are against you. Um, so with that being said, with that being said, that's, I just thought that was interesting. I'm still letting it go. I want to see how far it goes. It's a paper account. So <laughs> we're good with that. I never, I'd never had that happen to me before. So that was an eye-opening, eye-opener to me. I'd heard about it. Um, you know, you get some news spikes every now and then that if you, if you were in it, um, you know, it could shoot past your stop loss before the broker actually takes you out. But that wasn't even news. It was just, just a normal day. No, no news involved whatsoever. And it still didn't kick me out. So, um, questions, comments, concerns. This is the moment, you guys, if you have any questions. Hi, this is Bianca. Before I go to this patient's house, <laughs> let me ask this question. For me, um, how do I do it? Because I'm on the road a lot. I'm in and out, in and out. Right now, I'm using a, a demo account. Because I, I used to, at the beginning, I used to do a live account. But because I was learning, I kind of like, blew up my account a couple of times. So I decided to time myself out and put put myself in a demo until I kind of get it a little bit more before I jump into the live one. Mm -hmm. But because I've been on the road, you mean in and out, in and out. But to, right now it's, I'm profitable on, on mostly every day. Like yesterday I did a 3000 today, this morning I did a 700. The day before I did Bianca 1200. Yes. What is, but, uh, so uh -huh. what, what is your, um, I don't like speaking in, I don't like speaking in pips and I don't like speaking in monetary value because both of those are misleading. However, what isn't mis misleading is your risk. So what is your, what is your R profit? So how much did you, if you're risking 1%, that's one R to gain two R. 3R, 7R. So what were you risking in order to get that 3,000? Um, I think I was, do, um, I was doing just regular uh, size, um, probably like 0.10%, 0 0.05. Um, that's what I was using. And then okay. it, it just adding up. So the other, the other, so depending on the trading platform that you have, um, that's the other thing I would be, I would recommend is whatever, whatever your trade, your trading plan should tell you how much you're risking, whether that's 1% of your account or, or um, yeah, actually a percentage of your account, like a percentage of your actual capital. Um, 
the problem with trading lot sizes is different lot sizes have different values depending on the currency pair that you're trading. And so, yeah. you know, 0 0.01 of GPP USD is not the same value as 0 0.01 as of, of USD JPY. And so you could be risking more on one of those trades than the other. And the problem with that is, let's say you took a buy on USD JPY and you made it a one-to-one, -one. cool. And you, you know, $10 risk, $10 gained. Okay, but then you did the same lot size on GBP USD and you lost that one. And that one was a one-to-one -one, and you're down 15. Well, you should be break even. You won one, you lost one. But because of the price difference, you're actually down five bucks. And so be careful with, with the, 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 the numbers are nice when we start using like 0.1s, 0.15s, but the monetary value makes a huge difference unless you're sticking with one currency pair. If you're only trading one currency pair, then you're good. But if you're hopping around multiple different currency pairs, that can end up biting you where all of a sudden you're not winning as much as you thought, even though you're winning, your account's still being chipped away at because one currency pair is not as high valued as the other. So right now I'm just, I'm just doing um, GER30, um, what was the other one? US30, um, that's, that's what mostly I'm, I'm using. I think there's three of them that I'm using, not, not 100. That's the only three, three or four thing I'm using. I don't want to keep because I'm like I said I'm on the road I'm going back and forth back and forth um so I kind of like stay in three so I'll see or sometimes like I'm stuck on one one mm -hmm. until I see what what's happening so I don't lose too much I don't have too much open because I don't have because sometimes like I go to a building where I go to there's no wi-fi I can't even keep my eyes on it <laughs> you know so um so and for the journal, it's hard for me to write a journal because I'm in and out, in and out. Um, I would. I the time. You can. I would do a journal. Do a journal online. Do it like through Google Docs or something like that. That way, you can always have it on your phone. Um, even even without Wi-Fi, you can download a Google Docs locally to your phone, and as soon as it uploads to Wi, or as soon as you connect to Wi-Fi, it'll automatically upload it to the cloud. Um, Journaling is important, though, um, just so you can you can see and track how well you've been doing. Um, but you, I would recommend to find out what your monetary value is when you're trading point one or point whatever, because you said US thirty, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, US thirty. Um, US thirty is no joke. I can't even uh, see. What is uh, 0.1 lot size in the US 30? That's one lot. It saves a lot. Oh, there we go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, because I do like point one, point two, and then print three and five. That's 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 the only thing I use, but it's been working out um, good so far. Hmm. Have to look at that one. Yeah, find out what your find out what your pip value is at. Um, to make sure that you are, because you know, if you made 3000, but you were risking 3000, then that's a one for one. That's, I mean, it's good that you made 3000, but that means you need to be more than 50% right every time you get in the market. So, and you know, if, if, if you have that and that's what you, you, you know that, which you should, you should know that. You should know that through your back testing um, that you are more than 50% right. You should have like, how often are you right? Do you have that offhand? 
Um, it seemed like most of the time, because I don't stay too long, because you at 30, they move fast. Um, so I don't stay too long. When I see the amount that I want, I just close it. Gotcha. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but when I see, uh, like, if you come up, it, it moves fast. So it's like a, a hundred dollars. I just go ahead and take it and run. <laughs> and then that's it for me. <laughs> okay. That's how I do. But because I can't stay on it all the time because I have to keep moving in and out. So I don't want to let it go while I'm with a patient. I can't even close it if I wanted to. It's just in and out. Yeah, and you've steadily seen account growth? Yeah, because I started um, with, um, I brought my account to 1,200. Um, now I'm at almost six, and I started um, Monday. What are your losses 12, like? 1,200. Um, I, I, I just know that it grew from, 1200 to almost 6000 6, so I don't, I'm not sure. It's just, I'm just excited, but I'm, I'm in a demo, so I am just want to make sure before I jump in back to the real account that I could do the same thing, you know, in the real account. Um, probably not without a, either with, without high leveraging or a, um, the demo account that you're using, what is the... Uh, you said you started out with 400? No, 1,200. You started out with 1,200. Mm -hmm. Did you say it was down 400? No, I I, I had a um, something happen. I was the market closed on me on a Friday. Because I, I think I had 2,000 on it. And then the market closed, so I had to close it. So, it, you know, because I had to take that loss. And then Monday, I say, okay, I only have 1,200 to use, so let's see what I can do with it. And then I bring it up to now, I bring it up to almost seven, six. So have you, have you tested US 30 before or are you just now dipping into it? Um, I tested before and that's why I, I say, okay, let me stick to that and learn it a little bit more because it seemed like it's working for me. The other one, I tried it, but it's not working for me. So that's why I'm like, okay, let me stick to that and see how that goes. So it's three. I would, I would definitely say do another. So you should be keeping track of all the trades that you're trading. You know, put it in a, a notepad, a journal, um, online journal, something like that. Keep track of all those. And you need to do it probably another 100, 150 of US 30 the way you're doing it. You know, mm -hmm. make sure you're doing whatever you're doing that worked for you. Make sure you stick to that and okay. see what that looks like after 100 to 150 trades. Because you're talking about okay. since Monday, you're talking about Monday as in two days ago, Monday? Yeah. Yeah, two days ago, Monday. Yeah. That is not enough. I mean, you could have just been lucky at rolling the dice at that point in time. Um, no, I've been doing it. I've been doing it longer than that. But... It just when my account went down to 1200 um, Monday, that's what I had to work with, 1200. What did you start the account been, to begin with? I've been doing, I've been doing, um, because I get my demo, the, the demo was like 5,000, but I had that demo for like a, a month or so. Okay, so. so I, had, I had it a month ago and and then when I had that, I had to close a few accounts because I had multiple open. And when the market closed on Friday, and then I say, okay, let me just close it out. And then on Monday, I start over again, but I only had like 1,200 to work with. Well, see, so mm -hmm. just, just being honest, you started out with five grand. You're up to six mm -hmm. grand now. Yes. Yeah. So you're really only up a thousand yes but the question then would become if you started if you started an account with five grand and you got it lowered all the way to 1200 would you still have the emotional attachment 
to continue going after you just saw your $5,000 of real money go down to $1,200. Like this is demo demo plays a completely different role because it's not, it's not our money. I mean, I did, I mean, I did for the real account. I almost, I blow up 3000. So that's why I put myself in the corner and said, no more for you. <laughs> yeah. Just play until you really get it on the demo. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I did blow a big red. <laughs> start with so, your start uh, with your demo account and keep it going for the next hundred to hundred fifty trades. Okay. If if at a hundred trades you're 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 very successful um, at, at doing it, then you really don't have to go to one hundred fifty. But if at a hundred trades you're mildly successful, you know, like you're you're maybe getting a good five percent on the account, do to one hundred and fifty to make sure that you're actually staying consistent with that 5%. Yeah, because that was my first demo account too. And, you know, just playing with it and, you know, guessing and stuff like that. That was uh, that old, that whole account, 5,000. So that was at the beginning, I was losing left and right. <laughs> yeah. You know? So yeah. at least at the end of the day, you know, I walk away with seven or 3,000, you know, now, I, I kind of see instead of finish the day with negative. So that 5,000, that, that was my beginning of when I had it two, was two months ago. So, and I was just entering left and right, <laughs> didn't know what I was doing. And then just, you know, messing up the whole account. But now at least I'm coming out with something instead of negative. You, usually before when I first started, I was coming out negative. Right. So yeah, so. continue going with the, uh, with yeah. the your account. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't give up. I didn't give up after I lose mine. I know there's a, there's a light under the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. There's so, a light. Um, I have a quick CF. question. I think Esper and Sia had a question too first. I don't know. All right, I'm going to um, mute it. I have to go in. The patient's looking at me. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I'll be muting you guys. Okay, bye. Esper, do you want to go first or or does it matter? Um, You can go. Oh, I didn't even know it was you. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my question is for a beginner, what would you say is an ideal time for trading um i know that i've been trying to stick with just the 8 a.m to probably one and then um i think it's either the london session at 3 a.m in the morning what would you say is ideal time for beginners not to i mean you'll always get trapped in the market but if you don't know what you're doing but um you know to basically stay away from liquidity uh you want to stay away from liquidity or you want it well, I guess I want to stay away from it, but depending on um, what trade I'm in. <laughs> so generally, generally, liquidity is your friend. Um, that's okay. what's going to get you to, to TP quicker. Um, let's, I'll say that actually in both ways. It'll, it, that'll, that's what's going to get you in and out of your account quicker, um, whether that's take profit or stop loss. Um, so like if you want, if you want to get in and get out relatively fast, um, then doing your London and your London and New York sessions are great. Um, they both move relatively well. Things tend to slow down in the Asian market, but when it comes down to, when it comes down to, for a beginner, when is the best time to trade? Um, it would, I think, depend on your trading style. Uh, if you are a, if you are a scalper, and and you want to be in and out the market quick, then liquidity is where you where you're going to want it. You're going to want that there. So you're going to be probably doing it during your London New York session. Um, if you are more of a <clears throat> a day trader, then See, even then, your your London and New York session are pretty much where you're gonna where you're gonna want that. Um, the market, depending on your what your trading plan is, like there's a lot of 
concepts that work well um, in any market. Support and resistance for the most part works. Uh, whether that's Asian session, London session, New York session, you know, a support to support resistance resistance. If you continue taking the trades that you you know profit, you know, with a statistical advantage will end up working out, the numbers are going to play out by themselves. If you're doing something like the money line, though, the one that involves around an indicator with um, that is looking for trends and pullbacks, well, Asian session is probably not for you because that's generally when consolidations happen. Right before London sessions, also not, which is generally Asian session, is not good for you because that's when consolidations happen. That's when you end up getting tore up with strategies like the money line because everything's whipping up and down and you're not getting a good trend to be able to catch that. Um, so <clears throat> your the best time to trade is going to be when your trading plan tells you to trade. Um, and so when you put together your, your trading plan and it tells you, okay, hey, when the market, you know, on the money line area, you know, wicks down into the 50 and then gives you pin bar, you know, and, and then comes back up over the five and the seven or width below the five and the seven and gives you a pin bar and then a golfing candle, whatever, whatever the rules are, whatever your rules are, when it tells you to take it and you're there at the market, you're, you're there on the, on the charts, you take, you take that chart, you take that um, entry. Um, the more you play around with that, the more you, the more you're watching it and you're seeing it play out, the more you're able to tweak and understand that, yes, even though my trading plan would have in the past when I first started told me to take this, I know that 90% of the time when I've taken this one, it fails. So I'm not taking it because that's, uh, you know, I've nixed out of my trading plan or tweaked my trading plan to get away from that. Um, if London, if, if London isn't around your normal, I'm up and awake and do it, able to do it. Don't try to incorporate London into your trading plan. Um, if, if you're like, okay, I work, nine to five um, and I can't, I, I'm not at a computer, so I can't do it. Okay, well then look at your daily and your four hours and possibly one hours for entries. Maybe you can get a break if you get an alert and alert lets you know, hey, your one hour candles in the, in the mix, go look at it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, or, you know, you can, you can roughly do the same thing with somebody who wants to trade the 15 minutes. Um, you can do a, a four hour, one hour, 15 minute, and every four hours, a new candle prints. So every four hours is the only time you need to come back and look at the market. So you have, you know, at, at nine o'clock, the, the New York candle prints. If you aren't seeing stuff that you like um, or you can't set up what's getting ready to happen and have a plan, a trading plan for what's getting ready to happen, then you don't need to come back and look at the market until one. Um, and so you can break away from that. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be your trading style, and this is you've got to make it work for you and your lifestyle. This is why, you know, what works for me or what works for um, Nicole or what works for everybody else isn't always going to work a hundred percent of the time because it doesn't fit the lifestyle that we have, um, or our personality, um, or our yeah, or our personality, um, or our risk tolerance, which is another thing. Like, um, I can't do it. Uh, Bianca does with US 30. US 30 moves way too fast. There's way too much, um, way too much liquidity in US 30 for me. And, and those numbers fly up like there's no tomorrow. And I cringe every time I look at it. Um, but some people have that, some people do that just fine. They have that risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I would say, what kind of, do you know what kind of trader you are? Honestly, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> And like, that's, honestly, that's good. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I feel like I'm more of a scalper, honestly. No. I would um, say everybody starts out that way. Everybody feels like a scalper because, because number one, because it, it's in and out. Uh, yeah. You're in it. You're on a chart for like five minutes. You, you make an entry and then 15 minutes later, you're done, you're out and and a lot of scalpers who've been doing it for a time and they, they're good at it, they make really good money. And we see that and we're like, oh yeah, that's me for sure. Um, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm not a scalper. Um, I've, I've gone down that rabbit hole and you may have to go down that rabbit hole as well in order to realize that you may not be a scalper as well. Um, uh -huh. it's, 
it doesn't work out for me and my account size or me and my broker. Um, since scalper requires, I mean, you're, you're scalping on a low, low time frame. So spreads really, really eat into your profits. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, and so if you're, if you're feeling that right now, guess what, where you're at right now, chances are scalping's not for you. Right. It might not be you. It might not be you for you. Like it might be for you personality wise, but for your account and your broker, it's not. Um, Okay. And so with that being said, you know, you adjust based upon, you adjust based upon your situation. What else can you do? The same concepts for scalping. I'm pretty sure if you if you expand those out on on higher time frames, I'm pretty sure they would generally work the same. You just got to wait, you know, a couple hours, right? Okay, from the play out because if 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 you did not if you did not see what time frame I'm at right now, and I went down to the one minute, like a market's a market. It trends, it consolidates, it creates support and resistance, whether it's the one minute, the three minute, the five minute, the 24 hours, a market's a market. They all move the same and they all pretty much follow the same rules um, or not follow the same rules. They, they pretty much move the same. Um, it's just a matter of how quick is your execution time um, and, and what all comes into play. So scalping, you know, you have to worry about spreads. So you got to get a broker that has really, really low spreads. And then you also have to have a broker that's quick on execution times because a slip four or five pips in one direction is, 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 is bad for you. Mm -hmm. I guess could be good for you, but bad for you. If you went to go take, to take profit and it slips five pips down, like, and you no longer have those extra five pips that you thought you hit a second ago. Um, right. So with that being said, back out of the scalping a little bit, try move, move a little bit more towards like a, a day trading um, where you, where you have a little bit more leeway. Um, okay. Am I... I, yeah, I would write yeah, sorry. Everybody, just a lot of people start out as scalpers. They're like, yeah, scalping's for me. And then a little while later, they're like, no, actually, um, based upon situation, lifestyle, scalping at this point in time is not for me. Some point in time, you could hop into it and be successful. And because you have the account to back it up or you have the broker to back it up and your personality was already there to begin with. So you'll be good at it. But maybe like right now, it's not it. Gotcha. Uh, My next question is when... um... When is there a, a time for a time frame, I guess, to when you're supposed to mark up your support and resistance line, or it doesn't matter? Um, that depends on your trading style. Um, okay. You know, I have uh, one of one of uh, the guys in one of my groups. He does the one minute, and he marks up his support and resistance line on the one minute. Um, and as you, you know, support and resistance works and he, he, he has some, ent- I don't remember what his entries are, but you know, it works for others. Um, they do a, they do a 15 minute, one minute. Um, they do a 15 minute. Oh my gosh. Why are you not marking? They do a 15 minute support and resistance. Um, and then they'll drop down to the one minute and only trade off of that one looking for. No, I, stuff. I don't think you understand my question. Let me see if I can explain it better. Basically, um, what I'm asking is um, when you're doing your support and resistance, do you change it throughout the day? Do you change it throughout the week? Do you keep the same? I know once it's broken, you change it. Um, do you do it once the market is closed? Ah, uh, OK, so. That will, that depends on you. Um, I know you, you okay. just said that like once it's broken, you change it. There's a couple of traders out there that know they leave it. If it's been, okay. if it's been support and resistance in the past, they'll leave it and project it out to the future. And, and they have, they have rules on when price gets to that area again, 
what are they looking for in order to get into a trade? Um, and so, you know, um, for me, I do it daily. Um, I'll come in. Um, I, I play the four hour, one hour, 15 minutes. Um, I mark up my level on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so yesterday, uh, this level still would have been the same actually. Um, but as of, you know, back on the 22nd, this would have been my level right here. Not this one, because this one hadn't formed yet. I'd be waiting for price to come up back into this area here. That would have been my level because it just broke. And I'd be waiting for price to come okay. in here and then looking on lower time frames for it to come down. Um, okay. And so I do, I come in, I do it because I'm, I consider myself to be a in and out day trader. I try not to hold anything uh, over two days, three days. Um, by Thursday, I'm done trading because there's almost nothing for me on Friday because I'm not going to let it run over the weekend anyway. Um, so every day I come in because I want to see the new levels that the market's telling me I need to be paying attention to. I don't care about levels way back here because I'm just concerned about current price action as it sits right now, because I would like to be in and out roughly, I would prefer to be in and out in one, four or two, four hour candles. I would prefer. Um, okay. And so for me, I mark up my levels daily. For others um, on, on higher time frames, if they're, if they're swing traders, you know, they may only mark up their levels once a week. Um, if you're an intraday trader, which is even smaller time frames, you're, you're talking about the one hour 30, 15 or 30, 15, five or one minute scalpers. Scalpers usually are only concerned about this one candle here. Like they're not even concerned about anything else because um, they're going to be in and out before, before this even comes to a level. Um, that they're that they would be drawing on any other time frame, um, so it really depends on your trading. Like, what is your trading style? What what time frames are you looking at? But you can leave them, you can mark them up and change them every day. You can, there's there's all sorts of things you can do, but it's going to be based upon what you've already tested to know that works for you. Because um, once again, how you draw your levels is also up to you. Um, some people like to cut into the bodies and not go all the way to the wicks. They like to have mm -hmm. this area here. Well, that doesn't work for me. Number one, I just find too much um, subjectivity in where I like to cut the bodies and where the wicks get cut. So I like to have hard rules that I know I can follow. It helps me stick to my discipline. So. Okay. Great. Find okay, out what works for you, you and then make sure you stick to that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Esperancia? Oh, I know you did ask about the broker. So. Um, yeah, throughout answering, I mean, throughout um, answering her question, you actually answered mine. So it's really just a broker. So I use Oanda and I use Oanda for a couple different reasons. Um, Oanda is pretty decent on spreads. They're not the best. Once again, if you're a scalper, I would not recommend Oanda whatsoever. Um, if you are, if you are a intraday trader, I also probably would not recommend Oanda because they're, once again, their spreads end up eating into your profits. Um, if you are more of a day trader and you plan on being out within, you know, a day or so, um, it works out good. Um, I have rules around which pairs I there's 32, 36 Forex pairs. I don't remember how many are here right now, but this isn't all of them. I trade them all, but I have particular rules on which ones I trade through Oanda on which time frames I trade them because the spreads are so huge. Um, so like if I go, so like all these ones down here, like the U S U S dollar, um, Thai bot bout. I don't know what it's called. Um, these two lines are the spreads. 
So this spread is roughly about nine pips, um, is a nine pip spread. So I won't trade, my rule is I have this ATR indicator, which is, uh, it's free on trading, it's pretty much on any platform, but it's the average true range. It's the, the average of the last, mine set for seven, last seven candles. Um, what is their range? How many pips did they move on average of that range? And so right now it's 0 0.07, 0 0.076. That equates to, if you just look at it, it's 76 versus 93. My rule is I won't trade on this time frame. This will not be my entry time frame until the ATR is twice the value of the spread. So I need at least 186 um, ATR, 0.186 before I even look at this as being my entry time frame, So this ATR is 59. Um, this ATR is 239. So like this, I would trade. This would be my entry time frame, though. So with that being said, if this is my entry time frame, I'm going up a time frame for structure. So I'm going to the weekly. This is where my structure is at. For my behavior, I'm going up one more time frame for my behavior. So my behavior, according to the monthly time frame, is we're looking bullish. So I'm only looking for buys according to this behavior. So when I drop down to the weekly, I draw in my structure. My structure, once again, stay, stay consistent. is from wick high to body. I draw in my structure. And then on my daily time frame, I'm just waiting for price to come back in here, give me a double bottom, and then take off. And that's, that's it. And as you can see, the spread, the spread isn't bad when you look at it on the daily level. When you start looking at it on the 15 minute level, like if I were to take a buy here, if I were to take a buy here, number one, my entry would be here. If my stop loss, if I was a scalper, my stop loss would be underneath the swing level right here. Well, this is the, um, this is the sell limit. As soon as this hits my stop loss, I'm out because that's what the spread is. So my entries here, I've already lost, you know, however many pips that is. My stop loss is here, which means I've already lost that amount as well. So I'd have to put it way down here, which means my top profit target is, you know, is, is nothing. So this is where spread comes into play um, on, on trading. And this is where you have to take that into consideration with your trading style. Um, being a scalper isn't for everybody, not necessarily because they aren't a good scalper or they don't have the mentality or, or emotional commitment or discipline for it, but just because, you know, their broker is not ready for it or, or your account size isn't ready for it. Um, so, you know, there's, there's things like that. So with Oanda, I would not recommend it for scalping. I would recommend it for day trading and things of that nature. Um, or, the one, one of the benefits I like with Oanda is you can actually trade directly through, um, you can actually trade directly through TradingView. Um, so I can connect to my broker right here. I can place and place trades, edit trades, change trades, close trades. I can do everything I want straight from TradingView. Um, with no problem. Here's a couple of the other places that also can do the same thing through TradingView. Um, <clears throat> so I like that about TradingView. It doesn't require me to use MT4. It doesn't require me to use any other um, app or anything like that. I can do everything directly through TradingView, which is pretty nice. The other thing, as, a, as I was referring to when I was talking to um, Bianca, is what is your PIP value? Um, because because, and here as a, as a warning for anybody and everybody who is, who is listening and needs to be warned, talking about how much money you've made or how many pips you've made is very misleading. Um, I could easily, you know, I, a thousand pips. I made a thousand pips last week. What does that matter if I was risking 10,000 pips to make that thousand? Nothing. Basically, that lets you know that... Uh, I'm a really bad trader and it was really on luck that I made the thousand pips because I was willing to lose, you know, 10,000 pips to make that thousand. That's a terrible risk to reward ratio. Um, saying that I missed, I made 3,000, 
4,000, 5,000, 500, 300 um, last week is also very bad. How much were you risking to make that? And so whenever you, whenever you talk, you talk in, uh, you should be talking in, in terms of R, what is your, what is your R factor? And so if you're risking one, okay, last week, um, last week I was up 18 R. So you, you take that and now you can apply that however you want. Whether you're risking 1% of an account, you know that every R is 1%. So I'm up 18%. If you want to risk that, if you want to talk about in dollar amount, okay, for every dollar, dollars R, I'm now up $18. $100, okay, $1,800. So you can take the R and you can apply that many different ways um, all day long. 2%, okay, that means I'm up 36% of my account. Like, you can't do that if you speak in hard in other values. You can only do that with your risk. So not to mention that tells you how, how good you are doing in regards to how your week turned out. Um, because if you say, well, I think you get the point. So think about what you're risking, which should all be part of your trading plan. What is, how much are you risking? What is your R value? For every unit of risk, how much are you going for? The higher you go for, the more, the more um, forgiving your, your trading plan can be. So with the one to three, like I said, I can be wrong 70% of the time and I'm still successful. That's a huge margin of error. I like it. It works for me. Um, there, is, there is a lot of psychological parts to it because you, once again, I could be wrong 70% of the time, which means I could have seven back-to-back -back losing trades that I then have to stomach, come back to the charts on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and still be willing to take those three next trades that may be winners. Um, you know, that, that's a possibility. You have to be able to do that and stay disciplined to it because it's only in time that the numbers are gonna work out. Um, it's only in time that I'll actually be profitable. If I decide to quit, well, then I've just ruined my trading plan that I've, you know, d spent so much time working on and making sure that it works. So finding out what your, what, what your, risk to reward ratio is and talking in terms of R that way you can actually get an understanding of what, how well you're actually doing. The other thing about Awanda is I don't have to do any math. Um, as I was asking, um, um, Oh, I forgot her name. As I was asking her about how much her value, Bianca. Was, Bianca, as I was asking her how much her value was, um, you know, you have to take, into consideration the price difference between odd JPY versus USD CAD. You have to go and find out how much an Australian dollar versus JPY is worth and then convert that over to USD CAD to make sure that you're doing a one for one. That when you risk, when you risk 1% over here, it's the same 1% on USD CAD uh, as far as your pit value or your lot size or anything like that. I don't have to worry about that with Oanda. With Oanda, you know, if I want a hundred a hundred pip stop loss and a 200 pip take profit. It's a one to two. Cool. Great. But let's say I only want to risk, um, a hundred dollars. Well, they tell, they do all that math to figure out how many units that I need to get in order to get it. Um, let's say I, own, I want to risk, you know, 2% of my account. They figure out what that is. They tell me what the value is. So I'm risking $217 of the account that I currently have right now. Um, they do all that math for me. I don't have to do it. Um, and so it makes it, it makes it really nice to be able to, to, uh, to set this up without having to go through the calculator and, and figure it out. If you're trading one pair and you're only trading one pair, you really don't have to worry about it. If you're trading multiple pairs, um, that's where the conversion can bite you. You can end up being really successful in one, in one trade and really bad in another. And you think that you're you break even, but come to find out you're less than you were because the, the one that you lost in was actually valued more. Um, so you actually get your trade value and your certain PIP value. So each PIP is worth $2 and 18 cents. And so that can change. So if I came here and did 2% here, um, that pip value is actually worth $3.89.
depending on your stop loss is all your pit value. So knowing, knowing what your, knowing your pit value, knowing what you're actually risking per pit is, is important. Um, and that all changes based upon the currency pair. And so you have to be careful with that. Um, I think, yeah, so that's one of the reasons I like OANDA is OANDA is already integrated in the trading view and it already does, it already does some other math stuff that I don't need to be, be worried about because it handles it itself. Um, but like I said, OANDA is not good for scalpers or intraday traders. Um, if you're going to be a, a day trader, a swing trader, that's perfect. Um, anything less than that and you you yeah, you got to you got to adjust other places so i make the adjustment by being a day trader for most of the high the, the liquid pairs so your your major pairs your gpusd your euro sd um gbb jby uh i'm a day trader for those but for some of the other pairs um some of the exotics uh the spreads are too high so i'm more of a swing trader with those but i use the same exact trading strategy because I know it works. And so it's just a matter of I change the time frame on the chart. I don't necessarily change my trading strategy. So I would rec I recommend OANDA, but there's there's a bunch out there that that do really well. Um, uh, Eagle FX. Um, there's a a couple, if you want to be a, if you want to be a scalper, you're, you're more than likely going to have to go to an unregulated broker, um, like IC markets, or, uh, I can't think of the other ones. IC markets is really the big one. Um, but you got to jump through some hoops in order to get to them. Um, especially if you're here in the U S because they don't allow unregulated brokers for U S uh, for people in the U S. So you actually got to like jump through hoops. You got to set up some, um, some, uh, VPNs and whatnot, and be able to connect over there and it can be done and it works out great. They're unregulated. So, you know, everything comes with risk. So if, if IC Marcus decides to shut down tomorrow, you know, your money's gone. Um, but by all technicality, that could pretty much happen anywhere. There's, there's that risk anywhere, you know, your bank can do the same thing. Um, with regulated markets, you're guaranteed up to like, same thing like a bank, you're guaranteed up to a hundred thousand dollars. The bank gets robbed and your account has a hundred thousand dollars in it. They're federally insured for that. Same thing with regulated brokers, which is one of the benefits of having a regulated broker. Um, if they were to go down for any reason, you get your money back. Um, so other than that, I don't know if anybody else had any other questions. Anyone have any other questions before the call ends? Mm -hmm. um, I have a quick one. Of course, um, you just want to be able to put your own um, like signals in and stuff. But at times, of course, you have people giving out signals. You don't know what time frame they're working on. So just to kind of like go back and so you would have to really just go back and check the time frames to see if it adds up if you're taking the signals so you're talking about like a signal group like somebody says hey go ahead and listen uh odd jpy sell get in on it yeah here's stop loss here's the take profit yeah um so generally whenever you get that stop loss takes profit you can sort of see what they're working with um you know, if, if, if somebody said, uh, if somebody said, uh, let's see this one. Yeah. So like if somebody was like, uh, it's like a nice even, so 600. So let's say odd JPY sell, you know, 600 stop loss, 1200 take profit. When you throw it on your chart and you look at it, it's like, that makes sense here. When you start dropping down into the 15 minutes, like if you're looking at this 15 minute chart and you're, let's say you're talking about 
support and resistance, um, support and resistance sort of thing. Like if you were looking here and this was your area of resistance that you were thinking about, why would you put it way up here? Why wouldn't you put it above here? So the 15 doesn't really make much sense. Um, you might be able to get, you might be able to get a little glimpse into what they were looking at if they are candle based traders. Some people are indicator based traders, like uh, like anybody who's on the money line. The, the money line strategy is is all EMAs, has nothing to do with candle patterns for the most part. Um, and so you won't be able to see, and then you have other people, oh, you have other people who have like RSI indicators or stochastic indicators. You know, maybe it's oversought or overbought in this, in this area. You wouldn't be able to see that unless you just started chucking indicators on here to go, hey, why did they decide to take that trade? Um, if the, the only way I've ever used any sort of um, signals is once I get the signal, I'll come in and use my trading plan. If it fits my trading plan to a certain point, I might get in on that. If somebody were to, were to, were to say, hey, odd JPY sell, and they hit it at this engulfing candle, it's like, okay, maybe you're a support resistance trader and you trade engulfing candles. And you know what? That generally works for you or else you probably wouldn't be sending out the signal. So there's a high probability that based upon your trading plan that I hope you're doing your due diligence if you're sending out trading signals, you know it works. And so there's a higher chance, it's better than 50-50 that this will win. And that's all I need, better than 50-50 and a one to two risk reward, that's pretty good, I'll take it. And so I might not risk a full position because it's not my trade, but it's, it's almost like it's almost like hearing, you know, one of the horse racers at a, at a horse track. And he's like, Hey, yeah, I heard that. Uh, what's his name? Isn't too, or uh, fantasy football, like the quarterback isn't doing too good. Okay. Well, I'm not betting on that team. Like he's sick with the flu. You're going to use the second string quarterback. Okay. I'm not doing it. I'll go with the other guy. Like, so I would not recommend, I mean, unless you have money to, to just throw out there, I would not recommend following anybody's stuff blindly. I would recommend, I would use it to help your own trading plan. Like if you can see how you would also would have taken that trade, um, then, then that works. Um, but I wouldn't, I would, I would watch out for that. Um, but if you throw it, if you throw their, um, if you throw their uh, stops and targets onto a chart, you can pretty much then start trailing out the time frames and see what time frame they were roughly looking at. Um, smaller, smaller stop losses, chances are, are, are uh, scalpers, um, intraday traders, bigger stop losses, they may be day trading, swing trading. Um, huge stop losses are definitely swing trades. So uh, your stop loss size on a chart will, will show you roughly what they're looking at. And then you'll be able to decide whether or not it makes sense. You know, even right now, I haven't had an entry. I don't have an entry in this odd JPY, but looking at what has happened, it sort of, it makes sense that this could be a sell. Um, just looking at the chart, it's, it's like, it's broken this line. It's tried to go back up. You know, you had, you had a, an up here, a down. If we mimic what price has done, price continued up. Okay. Well, we, we had that, it came down and it failed to go up. Well, usually a failure to go up means a success in going down. Okay, cool. And, and so things line up on, on what we're, and all we're doing is we're just bringing the pieces together of, of, of what we believe the market is going to do. And all in all, waiting for our moment that we've tested to make sure works. Now, right now, one of the things like Looking at this, you talk about FOMO, fear of missing out, like price has already come down. If I was going to stick with what I was um, going for, which is roughly a stop above there, although it all depends on the high. 
but like I'd already be in profit right now. All because of that engulfing candle, which, you know, is engulfing candles part of my plan? No, they're not. Could I have convinced myself, hey, you know, that's an engulfing candle on the support. I've heard engulfing candles are, are a pretty good indicator. And it's like, but I didn't test that to make sure that it works for my trading style. And so it's it's this kind of stuff that you need to you know watch out. You need to be okay with letting go of a trade. Um, if you don't, if you don't, if you miss a trade, that's that means you didn't lose any money either. So and that's successful too. Um, being a break-even trader or not losing money is just as much as a win as winning a trade. Um, and so, like, yeah, price could eventually rip on down here, and I have to draw a new level later on. Perfectly fine. Got to be okay with that. So, as far as signals, I would use them to to look at your own trading on what you're doing. Um, if you're using signals to build an account, then then that's fine. Like, um, you know, there's plenty of signal groups out there, and they're successful, and it's great, and it works. Understand, it's still a level of risk. You are risking your money for their success, which if they have a 80%, 90% success rate, that's pretty good. Um, but understand you're, you're taking yourself out of the equation. You're basically giving them money and saying, okay, cool, I trust you. And if for some reason they're off on a week, that could be the week you decided to do it. And you know, you've just lost that. And so, yes, you can be successful doing it. Um, but last time I last time I checked, at least all of all of you guys are in here to learn to do it for yourself. And so it, it seems like you're, you'd be taking a step backwards, so to speak, if you give it to somebody else and you aren't actually actively checking up on how would it have fit for you? Um, sure, build that bankroll. If they're working for it and it works for you, build it up. But don't rely on it because. I mean, at that point in time, you might as well throw your money into a 401k and call it quits. Yeah, I definitely understand that. It's just, of course, starting off, you just end up not knowing what you're doing and getting into it. You're, you're, you're looking at that. You're like, oh, okay, because you, you have no clue what you're doing until, like you said, you map out. And then you get to that point where you're like, okay, well, I have to figure this out on my own. So I can't keep on, you know, taking signals that I don't understand. And, but the signals kind of help you understand, like you said, where you are, where you need to be, you know, what's your pros, what's your cons, what, like you limit yourself to what you need to be doing for you. So I definitely understand where you're coming from, but when you're first starting off and you have no clue what a chart is and what you're looking at, people automatically of course take signals but now just flowing into stuff i'm definitely um realizing that i have to of course you know map out stuff and i'm starting to understand it more on my own which is actually kind of nice and that's yeah so that's the only thing i would and being of course being new in it it's like how do you know what kind of trader you are. I would only, re I would recommend following a signal group that matches what your trading style. Um, you know, there's, there's people out there who have indicator signal groups and that's what they run on. They run on an indicator or a couple of indicators, or um, I think somebody asked about a, a crossover uh, strategy. Um, crossover EMAs, it works. Um, who is the, um, what is it? Snake gang, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. Um, like he has a huge crossover EMA strategy. Um, he uses, he tailors that with price action, but I mean, a lot of it's the EMA crossover and it works. Um, this is, this is what I was saying earlier when I said like, it's, it's an art and a science at the same time. And all you have to do is be successful. Once you're successful, you can't, nobody's going to be able to tell you that you're wrong. You already know you're right. Like it works. Um, it, it might not be the prettiest. It might not be as, um, as, as successful as somebody else's, but it's still successful. And that's really all that matters. Once you get into the game and you start getting more and more successful, you can start fine tuning your success to be more successful. So crossover strategies, EMA strategies, they work. They're pretty nice in regards to like, 
once again, it's part of those rules. It helps take it helps take subjectivity out of your rules. If you're going with an EMA crossover and you like, yeah, once the, the five and the seven cross and it's above the 50 EMA and a candle closes above it, I'm getting in for a buy and I have stops below blah, 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 and targets at X, Y, Z, like, and this works. I've back tested it and it works and I'm going to stick with it forward testing, making sure I can do it. If, if it works forward testing and you get, you know, you're, you're successful with it, they work. Um, I, I did not, I, I got away from them a little bit. Uh, I first started with, with, um, with, with the, the money line strategy. I started with, um, and a couple other uh, indicator strategies. So I was, I was all about like coding it out. I was all about making it as automated as possible to help get rid of that subjectivity. And so I had actually coded out the, the money line strategy um, that would send me signals every time it met the rules. And it worked out great once again, except for the fact that I did it on the five minute, um, the five minute uh, time frame, And so on every time it hit five minutes, it was only successful. It was successful in the long term. Like you had to take all the trades because you don't know which one's going to win or which one's going to lose. And so you, I had to be committed to taking it, whether that was at 130, 135 in the morning, then 235 in the morning or 335 in the morning or right, you know, in the middle of uh, eating dinner. Like every time you got a signal, you had to take it because you don't know if that's the one that wins or loses, you just didn't know. And so um, I didn't like that. I didn't like being being so tied to a, a um, an alert that then made me had to go hop onto a computer and then quickly, especially on the five minute, you know, on the five minutes, then quickly input my entry and hopefully it doesn't slip. You know, like it didn't go up and down at the time that I, you know, missed out because that's eating into your profits or eating into your stop loss or anything like that. And so it's like that didn't work for me. And so if it crossover EMA crossovers work for you, perfect. Um, but if they don't, uh, number one, if if you're on an EMA crossover and that's what you started with, make sure that you, you know, write down your rules, stick to your rules, test it out. If it works and you're like, no, this works. Well, if it works and you're like, okay, let me try this. Then you work in real life. Make sure it works in real life. If it doesn't work in real life, you either need to tweak it or scrap it and go with something else. Um, but if you test it and it doesn't work, well, then don't move forward with it. Um, we get hung up on putting in all the work of back testing and we find it hard. It's almost like our little baby. We've raised it and we, we put in all this effort and work and then, and then come to find out it's like the worst child ever. And you're like, oh, I can't give up on it now. No, give up on it. Um, well, that was a terrible analogy. Don't give up on your children. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was laughing over here. <laughs> Sorry. Like, what an analogy. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, don't, sometimes you got to scrap it and go back to the basic. Understand. The basics work, whether it comes down to simple support and resistance or, or trend lines, they work. Um, unfortunately, as humans, we like to complicate things and we, we look at it and we go, it can't be this simple. However, it is that simple. Um, if you really want to see simplicity in its finest, um, missionfx.com, um, Nick Sean does just that. Support and resistance, that's it. Uh, it, maybe every now and then some trend lines. Very, very easy. If you want uh, complicated, um, you, you know, you can get you can get into some of these EMA crossovers with with Ichimoku Cloud and RSI and Stochastic, and you know what, they work. Um, it, so you know, they work for people, and those people are like, I I can't believe I can't do the simple stuff. I need this and the confluence of this and and how these things line up and tell me and make me feel basically it's all about confidence it makes them feel more confident to get into it because they have all these little checks in a box that they've tested and make sure that when the check in the box happens majority of the most times they are going to be successful and that's really all it takes so depending on your personality it might not take much for you to to feel confident on taking a trade for others, it might take more. You might need 
a couple EMAs. You might need a EMA and then some other, something else. It really, it really all depends on, on you, but find one thing, stick with it. Um, once, you know, back test it for hundred trades. So you know what you're looking at. All you're doing is you're building up your own habits. You're building up your, your mind and your eye to be able to see what you want to see that you know is going to work so that when you move forward testing, you're automatically only seeing what you want to see um, and, or what you need to see in order to be able to feel confident about getting into it. Then you get into it, you test it out, you make sure that it actually works. And then, uh, and then if it's successful, you move forward from there, however that is, whether you're building up a, a small account and you're just letting it compound or you're going for any of these um, funding challenges, FTMO, um, funding, tra traders funding, oh, well, no, traders funding just turned their challenges off um, as of today. Um, and there's a couple others as well that you can, you can, you can get funded with money. And a lot of them, you know, they give you $10,000, $100,000 accounts and you keep 70% of the profits, um, which, you know, if you're making, <clears throat> if you're making, let's see, let's just go with, if you're doing a $100,000 account, and let's say like last week, 18%. That's $18,000 last month times 0.7. So you'd be keeping 12, six. That's, that's like, I don't, I don't know about you guys. That's pretty, that's pretty decent for a month. Right. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, the end of the month. So yeah, that would, that would be it. Be, be at 18%. Uh, this end of this month, if I don't take any more trades today or tomorrow, um, which this one doesn't look like it's setting up and, and, and neither does the other one. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty decent. Um, so, and I mean, that's the quickest way. Then you take that and I'm doing four hour, one hour, 15 minutes. So every four hours, I look at the chart from nine and the two candles I look at nine and one once once nine hits I set up my my alerts I wait for the alerts throughout the day until they hit if they don't hit then at one o'clock I come back and look and see what the market's doing set up my stuff again if it doesn't hit by by five or if it hits around five I don't even I ignore it because I'm not getting caught in those spreads but if it hits anywhere in the evening time um, I ignore it as well um, and I'll come back the the next day and do it all over again um, and so, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take much time and really it's just about me staying disciplined to it. So I can actually get into one of the funded accounts. And then of course, the better you are at the funded accounts, the more money they'll give you after six to eight months of being successful at the funded accounts, they usually double or triple the, the account size, which all it does is triple the account size. I don't have to change anything about what I am doing. Uh, I, I still trade, you know, still trade on the four hour, still look for support being broken, turn to resistance, look for a double top, get an entry in. And that is, it's, that's as simple as it can be, it's simple as it has to be, um, but it can be complex if you, if you want it. So, um, yeah, Just find out what you're doing right now. So really stick with it um do a, do your back testing do your forward testing and then tweak if you need to or scrap and start with something else and then always remember there's the basics the very very basics that you learned the beginning about price action and and support and resistance they work um they work really really well um the trading channel is another uh another group out there that that does very very similar um, support and resistance style trading. Um, he does more of swing trades. He does it on the, the daily, the daily four hour, one hour. So if you are one, like, um, I think it was, uh, what's her name who said she's in and out and it's like, uh, doesn't have time to look at it. like the daily four hour, one hour is perfect because every day you come and you mark up a chart, that's it. And then you don't, you wait until you get a, a, a message, either trading view can send text messages directly to your cell phone, or there's other apps out there that you can, you can use um, 
that when price hits a certain level, it'll send you a message and alert to go look at your, go look at the chart and see if it would be, be an entry. Um, and so, <clears throat> but like, it doesn't, it doesn't take much. Most of the trading challenges only require 10% of a, a account gain. And if you're trading the daily four hour, one hour at, at, a, at like a one to two or one, 1 1.5, you only need five trades in the month to be successful. Um, and if you're waiting for those trades that you know that work out, majority of the most, majority of the, majority of the time, then you could easily make a funding, funding account challenge as soon as you uh, pass the psychology part. Cool. And um, so just so when, so when, for the benefit of everyone, um, you, you do this full time, right? Or is this, no, you have an outside perfectly. job or? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm I am uh, I am working working towards replacing my current income. Um, in the beginning, I was going to uh, I was going to build my bank account, um, just continue building it up. But somebody else has convinced me that I should just go ahead and go for a funded the funded account. That's way easier because then you can just turn around and while I'm still working do what I'm doing successfully with a funded account, because it, once again, it doesn't require anything more than what I'm already doing. Then take that money that I get from them and turn around and build my money with it. And then as soon as you build $100,000, $150,000 trading account, then you can turn around and I can separate away from that. I can trade my own money, which means instead of 70% of the profits, I get 100% of the profits. Um, which, which will then in turn, I can build it up higher. I can save for, save for more, you know, I can, well, I would have to build it up higher because then I have to actually, I would want to take over my current salary um, with what I make to include being able to continuously build up the trading account because the more you build up the trading account, the, it, it's the same process and the same risk. It's always 1%. So if I'm always trading 1%, whether that's $100,000, which means 1% of that's what, $100? So if, or no, $100,000, 1% is $1,000. So if I'm trading $100,000 and 1% is $1,000, and then all of a sudden it's $200,000, I'm trading 1%, it's $2,000. Like I've changed nothing and I, I'm usually successful anywhere between 12 to 20% Per month, all all I'm all you're doing is compounding that. I'm changing nothing though. I'm not changing the risk. The only thing that changes is the value of the account, which just continually goes and goes and goes. Right now, the only thing I'm working on is my discipline. Um, as I said, you get a strategy that you know works and you know produces. I forward tested it. I'm I still I'm currently or I back tested it and I'm still currently forward testing it. And what tends to happen is me now. I'll end up getting into trades I shouldn't be getting into or convincing myself to get out of trades I should, shouldn't be getting out of or get out of, or yeah, not getting into trades I should be getting into, or I'll convince myself to get out of a trade early instead of sticking with what my rules are, which is really a set and forget. Um, I get in and it either goes to take profit or it goes to stop loss. There is no in between. I do not, some people learn, you know, they, their trading plan has them take partials. Their trading plan has them do a one-to-one -one break even. Their trading plan, you know, it, whatever their trading plan is, is for them. For me, I know that I can be successful anywhere between 12 and 20% on a month by setting and forgetting and following the simple rules that I have. Now it's all up to me. And you, you would think that knowing that you could be successful and make a crap load of money being successful, that you'd just be able to stick to it. But I'm telling you, this is it all comes down to you. Once you find something that works, the, the crutch in it all will be you. You'll be the one that causes it to fall. Um, and so your psychology, your psychology is 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 really, really key. 
um, <clears throat> staying, staying disciplined. And part of that first discipline is going to be staying true to whatever you're studying right now. So whether you're doing EAMA crossover, support and resistance, trend lines, um, uh, overbought, oversold, whatever you're doing, stick with it, back test it, forward test it, see if it works as a whole. If it doesn't, scrap it, tweak it, whatever you need to do and move to something else. Um, move to something else and continue doing that. I've tested probably 20, 30 different strategies. Um, about half of them work relatively well. The other half could probably use a little bit of tweaking, but it wasn't tweaking enough that I was willing to put in the extra effort. I basically went back to the basics and just went back to support and resistance because it works. It's very, very simple. I have very, very cut and dry rules that I can easily follow. And it makes, it takes, it takes a lot of the subjectivity and a lot of the choices out of it. I just execute. I trust the process and I execute because I know the process works. Back tested, forward tested, I guess can keep trusting the process. But then it all comes down to the psychology of me. And so that's where it's gonna come down to you guys as well as you go through it. And the first thing you need to do is build up your discipline by staying true to whatever you have right now. Be careful in any groups that you're in or any signals that you're getting um, because FOMO hits and you end up seeing other people being successful and you're like, well, why can't I do that? Why can't I take the, um, the one to 40 risk ratio that like that guy did? It looks like it looks so easy. Like, especially when he draws it up on the thing and you're like, yeah, I can see that. I could have easily done that. No, 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 you couldn't. Not without all the work he put in behind the scenes to get there. Um, and that's the stuff that you've got to go through that we don't generally see in any of these successful um Anybody who's made success in anything, we don't see all the work that they put behind the scenes. And that's the, that's the discipline you got to get into. Um, so that's my recommended, you know, trading journal, trading plan, put those things together because those are the things that you need to stay disciplined to, to go back test and then forward test. If it's successful and you know, you can make 10% a month, um, go do a, go do a freaking funded account and then go start making that you know, 10% of $100,000, $10,000, 70%, you make $7,000 a month. If you're making $7,000 a month right now, chances are you're probably not looking to really trade because you're already making good money. But if you aren't making $7,000 a month, there is a relatively easy way to make $7,000 a month. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's there, it's not going anywhere. Like the world would have to crumble for the Forex market to go someplace. Um, and that, that then money is the least of your worries. So I didn't know like what else might be like, I know unfortunately in the Forex market in, in trading in general, knowledge is poison. Too much knowledge is poison. We, we see too much and, and we want to try X, Y, and Z. It's like we're in a fashion store or a clothing store. We just want to try on everything to see what fits. And unfortunately, trading is not like that. Trading is very much, I'm going to stick my, my head in this hole right here. And I'm not doing anything until I dig down and find what I'm looking for. Um, and so you, you really, you do, you have to clear your mind out of everything that you've learned. Find what really spoke to you. Um, if, if, it, if it's scalping, you know, I, I do throw that word of warning. Everybody thinks there's a scalper because of the quick turnaround for money and success and all this other stuff. Not everybody's a scalper though. Um, so <laughs> pick the next second thing that spoke to you, whether that was support and resistance, whether that was trend lines, whether that was Fibonacci, whether that was uh, indicators, whatever it is, go with that, grab it, start out there, and then, then keep, keep going, keep progressing. So what other questions did you guys have? If there are no other questions, I will go ahead and, and uh, I'll end the call. Um, you know, I'm not getting a trade in today, um, but you know, such is life. I didn't take a trade. 
which means I didn't lose any money, didn't make any money. I'm exactly where I started. It's all good. So. I just wanted to say thanks a lot for your help. I appreciate it today. No problem. Um, I, I, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy trading. I enjoy marking up charts. Um, and I, I, yeah, if you really enjoy it, then you're going to have a blast. But once again, watch out for, watch out for the information overload and, and watch out for your, your own discipline and psychology. So if not, you guys have a great night. Um, and, uh, uh, if you need anything else, like I'm more than happy to, we can mark up charts. We can, we can do all sorts of stuff. We can talk strategy. We can talk, um, all sorts of stuff, any, any bit in time, just get with Nicole and, and find out how to get in touch with me. I, we talk on Facebook. So, um, okay. that's where your platform is usually Facebook or, um, I'm on, yeah, I, I think for the most part, I have some telegram I'm on telegram, but that's usually with, the uh, my accountability partner. Uh, me and him, we we trade the same way, and and so that's that's nice too. Which I could recommend getting an accountability partner, somebody who sees the market the way you do, um, or trades the way you do, um, because it makes once again I trade all thirty six pairs. Um, I don't have time to go look at all thirty six pairs, so he looks at half, I look at the other half, and then um, every every morning we hit up with each other and be like, hey, this is what I'm seeing for the day, and. Uh, and we talked through it. He went on vacation not too long ago, and I sent him some, I sent him some, um, some signals that I was coming coming up against, and he was able to take them while he was on vacation without having to worry about you know actually marking up the chart because we know that we we trade the same way and we look for the exact same things. So um, that's one of the benefits of it. If you get your trading plan together, when you get your trading plan together, you should be easily able to give that to somebody else and then replicate. Your, that's how science works. Then replicate your same your same whatever's against the same set of data. Um, if your trading plan's not like that, chances are there's a little bit of subjectivity into it, in which case that's probably going to be the one that hurts you when you're trying to um, tailor your trading plan because you have subjectivity in it. Um, so subjectivity comes later on once you're doing this for quite some time. You know, the market does speak to people and, and you, know, you know you get a gut feeling on certain things for a newbie, though, those gut feelings are generally wrong, um, and if they are right, they're right in the you know they're right in the wrong way. You might be successful, but it's going to hurt you in the end. Um, so, yeah, make something very very concrete that you could basically hand off to somebody and be like, "Hey, based upon these rules right here, tell me where you would have gotten into a trade," and and they should be able to easily point it out, you know, draw it up and point it out. Um, so, I would share my trading plan with you guys, but sometimes that's a hindrance. Um, I was shared a trading plan in the beginning and it, it really, I tried to, it's almost like those magic pictures. You try to make it work. You like somebody says, oh yeah, it's a pineapple. And, and you try to make it work. You try to make it, but you can't. Um, you have to see it for yourself sort of thing. Um, so if you have a trading plan, we can, I can help you tweak it. I can help you show you where you may be getting subjectivity in it. But other than that, um, yeah, we can, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can just reach out if you ever, if you ever need anything. Once again, get with Nicole. I am on Facebook. Um, she can send, uh, Robert Mileage is the same thing. The crab, the picture that I am right there. Um, I'm the crab on Facebook as well. So if you see me there, um, you can send me an invite and, uh, and I'll, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can chat there. But, um, yeah, it was great talking with you guys. Let me know um, if there's anything else. If not, I will be shutting down. Thank you. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. You no problem. That was some great information. I, I hope so. Hopefully you, hopefully you can use it and it works for you. Absolutely. All right. You guys take it easy. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Bye.